let's get ready to talk it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Off the Record. I'm Michael Landsberg. The name of the show, as always, is Off the Record. Whether we're in the studio, Florida, wherever, or at the Sky Dome, which we are today. And that means nothing that the guests say or the fans say will ever be held against them because it's all off the record. Off the record to talk WWF today. Off the record with a huge fan of the WWF, Trish Stratus making her debut appearance on Off the Record. Fitness model, you know her from the co cover of Muscle Magazine. Also today on Off the Record, he was on in the fall, 11-year veteran of the Canadian Football League. His name is Glenn Kolka, but Glenn, you broke your leg, you tore up your knee, we're sorry to hear that, but it was a guy half your size, Jackal. What's I'll the deal? I'll be back, that's all I gotta say. I'll tell you what, I've been told, I've been told three times by doctors, twice I could never play football again, broke my back. They I were came right. Came back and played oh, that sorry. year. Came back and played that year. My best years have always been here in Toronto with the Argos. You got it, brothers, right on. And also on the show today, you know him for once before, Stone Cold Steve Austin. How are you, Stone Cold? Give me no hell yeah, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Uh, also on the show today, and we can't get a shot of him, you'll just hear his voice, though. He's up in the rafters. He may come down, he may not. Shawn Michaels, how are you, man? How are you? What was that? I didn't quite I hear that. I said I'm pretty good. How the hell are you? The heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, is here. Suck it! All right. So as you can see, we are going to have a lot of fun, and we are going to talk about wrestling. And I want to ask the three of you your impressions of WWF. And I want to ask you questions about who is the toughest, the best, and the baddest. First of all, the toughest SOB, who is it? It goes to SCU, Stone Cold. Glenn? Well, you know, everybody wants me to say Stone Cold. Everybody thinks I'm going to say Stone Cold. And as far as active wrestlers are concerned, Stone Cold has got it. But that's only until the Colkster gets back in action. Let me tell you that. Right, and a lot of us know the toughest people that we know who have both ears pierced, hello, I don't think so. And Jason Sensation, who's the toughest guy around? I'd have to go with uh, Mick Foley. Mankind, and I know, I agree, Hell in the Cell Part 2. Awesome. I agree. You're right, you're wrong, you're wrong. All right. Next up, uh, best with the microphone. A second to you, Michael. Oh, go on, stop. <laughs> How about Vince McMahon? Vince McMahon! <laughs> yeah. I'm, usually not, I'm usually not a bandwagon jumper, but I'll tell you what, Steve Stone Cold Austin has got it going on with the microphone. I'll give him that. Jason? Me. Jason Sensation, I'd say, is the best on the microphone. Or the king, or the king. The king, maybe. The king. Jerry the King Lawler. I say Road Dog, Jesse James from DX. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody! Okay. Um, the best. I'm gonna go with China. I think China's the sexiest, the sweetest, and the loveliest. China all the way. I think China has the best buys, anyway. Huh? I'm gonna go with, uh, Luna. Luna? Luna! Uh, I would say China! Luna. China. That was Luna. <laughs> All right, who's the strongest? Let, let's be serious about this one. Uh, raw physical strength. I mean, some of the strongest individuals in all of sports, no one contends this, are in the WWF. Strongest. How about, uh... With? Vader. Vader? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. No, you, you, I still hold the bench press record <laughs> for 225 pounds. I did it 53 times when I was in the CFL, so if somebody can beat that, then I say they're stronger than me. But until they do, I gotta go with myself again. Well, I, I 
wasn't aware of that information. I might change. <laughs> Jason. I'm going to go with uh, Dr. Death Steve Williams. He's going to have a little opinion. trouble lifting weights this week after last week's... Uh, but you, you played football for 11 years in the Canadian Football League, seriously now. Uh, you have now seen basically everybody in the WWF. Uh, compare strength of the gentleman that these two people were talking about with the offensive lineman that you would have faced. Um, I think it's a little different spectrum. The travel schedule is so strict with the WWF that it's very difficult to power lift and strength train all the time. Uh, with football, it becomes more of a... They don't care what you look like as long as you are big and strong. So yeah, football players, I think, as a general rule, probably be a little bit stronger overall. But uh, I tell you what, you've got some big, big, giant men who are powerhouses. Uh, like you said, Vader and... and uh, are you telling me Miles Gurrell wouldn't have been a good wrestler? Is that what you're telling me, Glenn Culkin? If long as you... Because he as kicked as long your long butt you for gave, a lot of years. Uh, Miles about 13 Steve Weisers before, I think he'd be happy. Okay. We are here at the Sky Dome. We are talking wrestling. We're going to get these people's opinions on the shape of wrestling to come. And we'll do that because we are here at the Sky Dome and we are off the record. The name of the show is Off the Record. I'm Michael Landsberg here at the Sky Dome, and we are talking today about what has become a favorite subject for us. First week we were on the air last September, we had a wrestler on the show, and since then wrestling has been very, very good to us. We talk about the entertainment of wrestling, we talk about maybe where it's going, and let's talk with these three guests about Degeneration X. Is it breaking up? Is it breaking up? Uh, I don't think it's broken up, no. I mean, I think it's strong, and I think it's doing very well, and I mean, I think uh, Hunter Helmsley's taken done a great job uh, in the absence of Shawn Michaels of stepping up and, and taking Generation X to new levels. But last uh, Monday on Raw, right, the triple threat match, X-Pac and Hunter uh, did scrap afterwards. Now, well, they, didn't, they didn't really scrap. Like, guys get hot at each other, of course. You're working yeah, together in the ring. we're talking about here, right? Pardon me? I mean, guys get hot at each other. But yeah, these... they can get hot at each other, but believe me, I've worked with Degeneration X. They are tight. They are tight so as So take ever. us behind the scenes, seriously. Degeneration X, locker room stuff. Give us an idea what it's like with those guys. What you see on TV is really what you see in real life. They are like those funny, happy-going guys, you know, all laughing and joking, and they're all one-liners to each other, you know? It's just amazing work with them. Great guys. But, I mean, I'll, inter I'll interrupt that, and in a short period of time, I have been fresh in wrestling. Some of the best fights I've seen have been in the locker room. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's like in any sport. It was like in football, same way. You get along with some of your teammates, some of the guys you don't like, and it's just plain and simple. It's human nature. Okay, well, here's another question. Sable, Mark Merrill, once an item, Will they ever be an item again? What do you think? I don't think they should be an item again. Why is that? Okay, Sable, this is for you. You're better than him. <laughs> don't go back to him. Don't you think? Hey, I don't like the... You're talking to a guy who's already been married once, and I, uh, I'm not really into it. Destiny will take care of it. True love will You're prevail. just not a romantic, are you, Blake Colca? I don't think so at all. I don't think they'll get back together at all. I think Jacqueline's gorgeous, and Mark Merrill's happy with her, so... Glenn, let me ask you, uh, you're now a WWF guy, so you, you can talk uh, off the record and quite candid about this. CFL locker rooms, you said you saw scraps? Who? Uh, don't, don't shy away, man. Give us the story. CFL scraps? I remember jumping through a plate glass window with one of my teammates uh, in Ottawa. Names? In a... Uh, Andrew Stewart, who played here in Toronto with the Argonauts. I basically had to, I had to slap him into order a little bit because he was starting to get out of place, so the veterans had to take port and had to, you know. And how about it, WWF uh, locker room scraps behind the scene you were talking about? Um, as you, everybody knows, the notorious uh, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, used to go at it about every fifth day. Right. All right, some other pressing issues. Rock. We were talking about Rock. I think he's great. Is he... Is he too good to be the Intercontinental Champ? Is he destined to be World Champ? That's all up to if he gets in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin's the man right now, and uh, if The Rock can beat Steve Austin, then he'll become the man. But I think The Rock is the best damn Intercontinental Champion there ever was, Jabroni. What do you think? How good's The Rock? The Rock is The Rock is somebody who they gave something to, I think, a little quicker than he anticipated. Didn't handle it as well as he should have. And now I give him great credit for bouncing back, and now he does everything just spectacular. I, I 
I think he's going to stay about there. I don't know. Stone Cold's a big challenge, and I don't know if he's got it. I get the feeling you're a Stone Cold fan, aren't you? A little. A little bit. <laughs> How about uh, Terry Funk? Uh, let, let's talk about him as, as an athlete, as a performer. 54 years of age, and still, I think, wrestling the way wrestling was meant to be. A guy who will put out for the audience and do whatever it takes to entertain and to win. Terry Funk. Well, I mean, it was like... He does everything with the same kind of zealous I played football with. I used to say to myself, as long as I can go home, look in the mirror, and know that I gave everything that I had, whether we won or lost, I still had some preservation myself. I felt good about myself. He does the same thing. He does it for the fans. He's going to do whatever it takes to please the fans, and that's what this business is all about. I don't think there's anybody in the dressing room that is more respected than Terry Funk for what he's done for this business and what he continues to do for this business. I think Terry Funk is one of the greatest wrestlers alive today. A living legend. Yeah, he really is. And a lot of sports, unfortunately, don't have living legends. They retire, but a guy like Funk has hung in there, not doing what a lot of baseball players do, and that is embarrass themselves as their skills erode, but a guy who still impresses the audience. Well, and I think without Terry Funk, you wouldn't have had a Nick Foley. Uh, Nick Foley, that was his uh, idol and throw it as he grew up and emulated himself after him. So, I mean, uh, I think he's done wonders for the, for the business. Okay, I know you follow it closely. Uh, Kane and Undertaker. They in cahoots? What do you think? Uh, that's a tough one. I, you know, blood, blood runs thicker than water, right? So, yeah, I think there's a possibility. I think they're both their own men, and they both do whatever the hell they want to do. I can agree with him. I, I don't really think they're in cahoots right now, but, you know, I guess we'll find out. There's always a little twist here and we'll there. We'll find out about that sometime in the future. I'm sorry? There's always a little twist here and there. There's always a little twist here and there. And we'll talk about uh, the twists in this sport and the commitment that these athletes have to make. Glenn Kalka coming off a very serious injury. Shawn Michaels, a couple of herniated discs in his neck. And you know all about Stone Cold Steve Austin. The commitment that it takes to wrestle in the WWF when Off the Record returns. record and we are talking wrestling today and we're trying to talk about it uh, in somewhat of a serious light because uh, while it is clearly entertainment it is also a sport that calls and commands incredible commitment from its athletes uh, Mick Foley we were talking about him before the things that he has done are, are staggering what he has put his body through and recently uh, can you tell me about exactly what he put his body through well, what nobody noticed in that match in the uh, Hell in the Cell 2, when he went through that cage, that chair smashed into his face, and when everybody thought there were boogers hanging out of his nose, those were his teeth. Went up through his mouth and through his nose. I watched them pick the thumbtacks out of his back. That man goes through everything. He is the hardcore legend, Mick Foley. So, yeah, I, I, just, to, just to add to that, I think it's... Uh... What people don't understand, neither is the fact that Nick Foley wrestled in Japan and other places before he came to WWF, and that's where it's very extreme. If you want to see extreme wrestling, you go to watch Japanese wrestling, especially back in the past. That was serious, hardcore, hardcore wrestling. But you played professional football, and you were down in the pits, which is allegedly the toughest place to be. How do you compare the toughness that you see in the pits, in the CFL, with what you see in the ring 200 nights a year in the WWF? Well, I mean, they're, they're, the two sports are apples and oranges. Uh, the preparation for the two sports is very, very similar. Uh, they like you more aesthetically pleasing with the wrestling. You have to be obviously appealing as far as how you look. But in football, it's just to be as big and strong as you possibly can. But uh, as far as the wear and tear, I mean, I, I broke my leg, tore my posterior cruciate and my anterior cruciate in a match in Regina. And, uh, and I put 11 years of football and never even had to use crutches before. So. I can tell you, there is a lot of damage done. There's broken necks every year. Uh, there's broken vertebrae, as Sean with his back. And don't you think that's the expectation of the audience? The audience demands a better show all the time, and, and these guys are willing to give it to them at whatever price. Sure. Well, I mean, you have the injuries that you have in any other sport anyway. I mean, you're, you're talking about conditioned people. They're conditioning specifically for the rigorous uh, activities that they're going through. But may I say that there are more injuries in wrestling than in any other sport. Brawl for all. Three weeks ago, uh, they put on the boxing gloves. And there was a question whether it would take off or not. And then you had Bart Gunn and Steve Williams, Dr. Death, going at it. And it took off right there because a left hook to the head put Williams down. And all of a sudden, this kind of stuff, I think, is going to take off big time. Because this is 
letting it all hang out. This is shooting matches in the ring. Well, uh, this is what people don't understand is that to get to the, the level of being in the WWF, you have to be a tough son of a bitch, whether you're Stone Cold or anybody. I mean, it's just the way it is. I mean, you can tell that now when they're doing a shoot boxing, when they're actually knocking people out, these guys are tough. Didn't I mean, you start out in that, though, way back when? Yeah, I started out in the So You Think You're Tough fights when I was young just to make money, and that was... Uh, like how young? Uh, 17 years old. And what was that? Just like you went in the ring and... Went in the ring, and it was uh, just go at it as hard as you can. They had six-ounce gloves on, and you went at it. And you had, if you knocked the guy down, you had five seconds to still pop him until uh, submission. What do you think, Jason? You like this? I think it's, it's unbelievable. It's dangerous, and uh, I don't think I would ever step in there to do anything like that. And That's I thought not a huge surprise. surprise. <laughs> I mean, you're not checking in the ring. You don't need to talk. Actually, Let's I face did, it. I think you and Kane should go at it. Yeah, you, you and I can bond on this. Here, I'll take you. I'll take you. <laughs> okay, I'll take you on any time, actually, brawl for all. Jason Sensation. Now, you know, I think, I think wrestling uh, the, I is take. unique because it takes you into a fantasy realm, you know, with the sagas that continuing and whatnot. And I, I think when you bring in this realism, it's maybe, it's a little extreme in, it, in itself, the activity itself, but, you know, I don't know if it's necessary, you know. Well, I mean, it's, ne it's necessary in a sense that if the people like it, they're going to do it. If the people don't like it, they won't do it. That's plain as And we should uh, explain that Jason Sensation, uh, a Canadian kid, right, uh, now big, big, big in the WWF, uh, doing impersonations of all those guys. Uh, how are you discovered? Actually, to tell you the truth, Owen Hart discovered me. He, uh, I was in a, a back room meeting wrestlers, and I started going nuts and doing impressions for Owen, and he's like, oh, that's really good, man. Why don't I take you in the back? You can meet some guys, shake their hands, and blah, blah, blah. And I hit off from there. Right. So it's, but also, you, you uh, when we had Vince McMahon on Off the Record, right? You Actually, came in yes. And... When I first, that, this was my first meeting with some of the people, but my first time meeting McMahon where I got my first gig at WrestleMania was at Off the Record when Vince McMahon did your show. Oh, oh so all, all of a sudden, it's, it's the other guy. It's Owen Hart, right, who, who, who found you and took you in the back well, room. Well, he found Which I don't me. want to hear about. But uh, <laughs> it, it had nothing to do with Off the Record? Is that what you're no, talking about? absolutely. Me? Off the Record was my first big hit. It was thanks to Off the Record of Vince McMahon. All right, we're going to take a break, uh, and Glenn, uh, you got a move you can show me? I I've been showing them from the best. I'll choke you out in about four yeah, seconds, okay. brother. I'll choke you out. We'll do that. We'll take a break, but always we want to know what you all think about the show and what you at home think about the show. You can reach us via the email. You can fax us. Please always let us know. Here's a sampling of what we got. Hey, Landsberg, I like your show. You always talk too much, though. Let the guests say a few words. You also need to get Undertaker on the show, and hopefully he tombstones you through the floor. That's not very much nice. You just took what I was going to do. I can't do that now. Gentleman X, Michael, I'm going to be at Skydome watching you make a fool of yourself like you do every day, except this time there will be a thousand people watching, not just your mummy. Am I, am I making a fool of myself? That's all no. That's what they said. There's our email address. If you got something nice to say, let us know. Either way, we're back. Kalka with his big finishing move as we finish the show on Off the Record. Uh, I just recently, I shot my uh, first cover came out from Muscle Mag International, so that's sort of catapulting me, which is good. So uh, that, uh, I just finished taping a martial arts show and I'll be co-hosting the, um, the weight training segments. That'll be out soon. And I'm doing an upcoming article in uh, Oxygen Magazine. Right, and our thanks, by the way, to Oxygen Magazine for uh, suggesting you. And, and you'll be back, right, because you're a major sportsman, not just wrestling. Of course. Right? <laughs> who's, who's the best hockey player on the planet right now? Just give me a name. On the planet? Well. Matt Sundin. I, I, I okay. don't know. Okay. Okay. Glenn Kolka. I know that uh, you got a lot of fans who are waiting to see you back in the ring. When will that be? I'm going to be back in the ring in about another three weeks to a month. I'll probably be back on, you'll see me back on Monday Night Raw, hopefully within the next two or three months. I got a question for you. When you go out on a date and you're talking to your date, are you looking at the crowd doing this? Or do you look them in the eyes? I actually You like to play eye, to the crowd, don't I you? I will make eye contact now yeah. and then. And Jason, are we going to see you on Raw in the near future? Yeah, hopefully. Um, uh, you'll never know when I come out or who I'll be. But I'll damn well be there because I'm the best damn nose in the business. Woo! Well, let me throw some names at you and you come back. Undertaker. Kane, Austin, I will bury you. Rest in peace. Uh, you gave us a little stone cold before. Give us a little more now. 
The bottom line is, Michael Landsberg, I know you got pissed off at me because I ripped your shirt off and showed how much of a toothpick you really are. But the bottom line is, if you want to try to shake my hand again, I'll shake it, son. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Okay, we got to take a wide shot for this one. Shake hands and make up. Uh-uh. DTA, don't trust anybody, right? Who else? Who, who do you want to hear him do, Glenn? Well, we got to go. Who else we got coming out? We got Venus uh, coming out, so why don't you try him? Hello, ladies. The Big Valboski. All right, Glenn, you got to show me a move. I've been shown some of the best moves in the business. What do you got? Well, the, the best, the best moves in the business. You won't be able to do another damn show uh, if I do it. But uh, I can just play in a full Nelson. Oh, good nature. You and I are friends. You can Let's survive. go. Let's ladies go. and gentlemen. Look at this! Michael Landsberg's in trouble as Glenn Coco wraps him up in the oh, full Michael, Nelson. You, it, you know on, what? That's, up, that's working for me. One more. Oh my gosh! Look oh, at that geez. beautiful bicep! Hey, I, Unbelievable! I got a question for you. Hey, you can do anything you want. Just don't take the mic. I got a question for you. When are you gonna stop hiding behind Ken Shamrock and guys like that? and really fight like a true announcer would. Hey, you know what? You can lay off any time. Guys, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, Mike. Okay, we'll see you next time on TSN's...